Hey guys, I'm Miss Fanny Stockpincher and today is all about rare earth stocks. Rare earth are increasingly gaining strategic importance for the economy. That is why rare earth deposits played an important role when Donald Trump wanted to buy Greenland in 2019. For all of you who don't want to buy an entire island in the Arctic Ocean right now, I now present my top 4 favorite rare earth mining stocks. Altogether, rare earth includes 17 elements, but I focus primarily on mining companies that contain a large percentage of neodymium. Neodymium, in combination with iron and boron, is the world's strongest magnet and is therefore used in electric drives. So main applications are EVs and wind turbines. So you should only consider investing in rare earth if you believe in a future where there are more EVs than combustion engines in your neighborhood. If you are interested in general information on neodymium, please watch the Commodity Supercycle video first. But let's start now with the four stocks. Vital Metals is an Australian company with a current market capitalization of just under 150 million euros. Vital Metals had its all-time high in 2008 at 90 Australian cents and then dropped to 1 cent. Since September 2020, Vital Metals has risen again but still has plenty of room to reach its all-time high. Vital Metals has two projects. The main project, Nechalacho, is located in Canada and is already in its development phase. From 2025 onwards, at least 5,000 tons of REO, meaning rare earth oxides, are to be mined here. Vital Metals claim that they want to produce at the lowest cost outside of China. However, caution is advised here. You can read exactly this statement at almost every rare earth miner. Over 9% light rare element oxide corresponds to a high grade of which 2.2% is also neodymium. The second so-called Weigu Hill project is located in Tanzania and is still in the exploration phase. However, the grade here is rather modest. Arafura Resources has a market capitalization of just over 140 million euros and is very volatile. The share price was already at 20 cents in January of this year. Since then, the share has fallen by almost 50% and is now at 11 cents. I already bought a small position of 20,000 shares about 9 months ago, which has now also decreased by almost half. Arafura is an Australian company that has set its focus on neodymium. There is already a full feasibility study for the Nolan project, whose link can be found on the Arafura's webpage. As seen here in the one-year chart, Greenland Minerals has fallen over 70% in the last 4 months, shrinking to a market cap of 75 million euros. This sharp drop is even more evident in the five-year scale. Greenland Minerals has always been volatile over the last five years and had an all-time high of $1.80 in 2007. Greenland is very rich in minerals, especially rare earth, which is why Donald Trump wanted to buy it in 2019. Greenland Minerals is developing the Cranafield project in southern Greenland. The project has very high grades of various rare earth and additionally uranium deposits. Greenland Minerals is strategically located and also has large quantities of neodymium. To evaluate Greenland Minerals and its future growth opportunities, we need to take a closer look at the political realities. On April 6, 2021, a left Green Party won the elections in Greenland, which announced in advance that it would immediately stop the Kwanafiel project. Right after the election results were published on April 7, Greenland Minerals stock then fell by almost 50%. Peak Resources is an Australian mining company and has already risen in recent months, as seen here in the 5-year chart. Nevertheless, Peak Resources has a very small market capitalization of only 90 million euros. There is also still plenty of room up to the all-time high in 2011, as shown here in the long-term chart. I myself hold 80,000 shares in Peak Resources, which have increased 2.5 times since I bought them just under a year ago. Peak Resources is looking to develop the Nguala project in Tanzania, which of course they say has a very high grade. Exploration has been completed and the results are posted on the website. The model of the processing plant, which can be seen here, exists only on paper at the moment. Based on where we are today, I'm now prioritizing these companies and ascending order from number 4 to number 1 to the best of my ability. Rank 4 goes to Greenland Minerals as I see little chance of how projects can be further developed under the newly elected Greenland government. From a mineralization perspective, Greenland Minerals would be ranked number 1. But even the world's biggest grades and deposits are of no use if the political will to implement them is lacking. However, since the given circumstances can change again in favor of Greenland Minerals in the medium or long term, I'm very interested in this stock. 
Nevertheless, the stock is too expensive for my taste at this point in time. The downward trend would definitely continue. I have Greenland minerals in my watch list and a price alert set at 2 cents. If the stock falls below that level, I will strike. Third place goes to Vital Metals, as the stock is simply too expensive for me. For a mining company in the development phase, which anticipates to produce only in 2025, a market capitalization of almost 150 million euros is not justified in my eyes. Nevertheless, I like the company very much because of the high neodymium grades. Should the share price fall, I will rejoin at a market capitalization of approximately 50 million euros, which corresponds to a purchase price of approximately 1.5 cents. Second place goes to Arafura Resources, as the Nolans project offers high grades and is already well developed. I also like the fact that the share price has fallen sharply in recent months. Peak Resources ranks number one in my rankings, because the high grade here is particularly high and the focus is on neodymium. In addition, it is unlikely that, for example, as with Greenland Minerals, political intervention will stop or delay projects, as the Nguala mine is located in Tanzania. Also, the market capitalization of 90 million euros is still relatively small. I'm convinced that the millions of electric cars that will be produced in the next few years, combined with the shift to renewables, will lead to resource scarcity. The resulting increase in the price of metals not only affects neodymium, but also therefore offers an investment opportunity for lithium, copper, nickel and other metals. If you're interested, check out the video Commodity Supercycle.